it's continuing a tradition. You know, it's continuing a tradition and finding our antecedents. I mean, so we have to look back before we can look forward. You should be putting me out of my misery. Give me some slack and a case of fight check, and I will save us all from a world. Hey, YouTube. Hey, street and fashion, and let's just say photographers. Um, getting ready to bring you another video from downtown LA, uh, here in the heart of the fashion district um, of uh, Los Angeles, California. So just uh, look forward to a few more minutes of um, a little bit of a special deal for you. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the photography of two of the great photographers uh, of the 20th and into the 21st century, uh, William Eagleston and uh, Jurgen Teller. And uh, do a little bit of a comparison to see like what type of work they do, uh, what their philosophy is on photography, uh, potentially, and uh, you know some other stuff. So, uh, you never know who you might see on the street here. So anyway, uh, getting right back at you in about uh, a second or two. Okay, hey there, I'm back. <clears throat> I'm gonna do this with uh, the light spotlight on uh, so I don't have to turn up the lights in the studio uh, too much. Uh, my uh, daughter's asleep so anyway so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this little discussion between two photographers that have kind of influenced me and um, also how they compare I always liked the idea that there's a uh, you know three degrees of separation between everyone in a particular art form uh, you know, just like the old uh, saying of like, you know, five degrees separation, three degrees separation. So right now, uh, these books, small books, are from obviously, you've been reading it for the last like minute. Uh, Jurgen Teller, uh, who is a portrait and fashion photographer, uh, who's been around since the 90s, maybe late 80s, early 90s. Um, his work uh, is pretty interesting, um, you know, he does um, high contrast color work, typically using film, he just recently started uh, using a digital camera, uh, from what I understand, uh, uh, 5D Mark III, uh, of which he says in a uh, Purple magazine, um, interview with Olivier Zom, a uh, friend of mine and the uh, editor-in-chief of Purple, uh, that uh, when he switched to digital, he doesn't see any reason why not to, he just never did before, um, and he uh, said that uh, digital is maybe a little bit too sharp, but he does campaigns for, uh, you know, um, big campaigns for like, um, Yves Saint Yves Saint Laurent, um, you know, this Marilyn Manson and his uh, ex-wife. Uh, you'll see some still life here. Uh, this is actually a photograph of someone you all may or may not know. Interestingly enough, there's also a Leica uh, 4.2 or 4P, M4P, and uh, it's a thing. I actually have that camera. But uh, this is the photographer uh, William Eagleston, which kind of shows his propensity to, and there's the photographer himself and uh, Mercedes. Uh, but anyway, but uh, showing William Eagleston shows a, a photographer's propensity to understand his influences. Uh, here's uh, uh, Araki, uh, a photographer from Japan uh, that you may or may not know, um, and I'll go into him either in this interview, uh, this uh, video, or another one. Um, but uh, yeah, this is Jurgen Teller taking photographs of some of his 
is Saints of the Craft. Uh, very interesting color work, you know. Um, and then, 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 of course, he does some black and white. Uh, this, of course, is Kurt Cobain, very famous uh, image. And some models. It's kind of a famous model. And others. And his penis. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll go a little bit more into uh, Jurgen Teller, maybe at a later date. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I also have one of the cameras, it's one of the cameras that I use, uh, that uh, Teller uses on a regular basis, and I already mentioned this in our previous video. Uh, this Contax, Contax G2, and he typically uses it with a flash, and typically with the very special, I like that little flash on there, uh, very special um, 40 uh, five millimeter. Uh, I use the 28 uh, because I like the 28 focal length a lot. But yeah, so this is one, it's also a range finder uh, in a strange way. It's very different than um, Leica range finders uh, as it's not really a true range finder. What it does is when you put a lens on there, it adjusts itself to um, within the mechanism here uh, to the the type of, uh, it's a film camera, of course. Right now I've got some TX, uh, 400 TX, 36 rolls. Um, it's got a little place here I can turn on the, about 28 out of 36 that have been shot. It's on its range finder. Uh, you can do single shot, you can do all the way up to high speed. High speed is very fast on this. And we'll get into this and we'll play with this one a little bit when we're talking about film. Mine's a little scratched up on the back, but I don't care because I'm not going to sell it. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's a camera that uh, Teller uses in a lot of his shots. Uh, this little three book series, it's actually saddle stitched instead of perfect bound, so it's a it's a really interesting little series. He's got, you know, other images here. Uh, you know, he'll do uh, very close-up shots. Um, very interesting. I mean, you'll see a lot of shots like this in Vice magazine, for instance. He doesn't shoot for them. He's been around a little bit longer. Some landscapes, uh, artwork. But it's all that really sort of high flash, high contrast. Uh, portraiture and then uh, he may obviously won't be using a flash in the landscapes but he still keeps it very light uh, and he lets the uh, and the you know different colors for the books there's Vivian Westwood um, portrait of her uh, you know he'll, he'll also do you know some nudes that are not because that's actually an artwork art piece probably from uh, antiquity so it gives you kind of a history, odd portraiture of someone that's, you know, eyes are rolled inside of their head. Um, you know, friends that are usually notable in some ways. So anyway, and then we'll leave it at that. So anyway, so uh, you're going to tell her as a, as a character. Now this book is uh, kind of special to me. Uh, this is William Eagleson's, for now, and it's a book that uh, William Eagleson did in the 70s here in Los Angeles. It covers a nice photo of a girl, I believe his wife, sleeping. Now, you'll notice that Eagleston as well does these light, wide landscapes, but he also, in most cases, puts person in there. Um, you know, then he has a toilet. Still has that kind of edgy... Uh, for lack of a better term, or uh, more inclusive style, so there's a toilet. Um, but you know, if you notice his colors, he's really identified the yellow of the urine and the green of the walls is is uh, identifiable. Uh, sort of the pastels of the I would assume this is Memphis and not L.A. because uh, that's where he's from. But like, sort of the colors here are very reminiscent of uh, what Kodachrome did, uh, but at the same time he's very aware of all of the colors and how they interact together. 
portraiture of a girl in curlers. Uh, again, William Augustine for now. And why I wanted to show you this is that Teller, who's a primarily now a portrait and fashion photographer, and Eagleston, who is more of an art photographer, uh, very influenced, influences a lot of street photographers, are both using kind of a interesting color palette as they go through their different things. There's Eagleston's wife, more personal for William. You can see him up in the corner with his camera, but you don't see the camera. Um, and then, you know, uh, as you see the red and the orange and these two women and then the greens kind of kind of move in with the browns and the grays uh you know the red of the red and green of that uh against the brick there's a nice sort of composition again there's this image where a lot of colors are similar and they kind of like interact very well together even the blue of the tv set uh, very boring scenes for Eagleson. Maybe this one isn't quite as boring. It's kind of an interesting shot. I think this was a shot that was actually used uh, by a band. Uh, so another thing that's in similarity to Dinosaur Jr. used this as one of their covers of their album. And uh, again, similarly used as something like uh, Jürgen Teller would have done. Or would do except he would be commissioned for it and I think that William probably took the photo and then it was sold so you know you'll see these again sort of found color blocking uh, for William uh, Eagleston also has a really interesting video that he did in black and white with a Sony camera from the 70s uh, you might want to find it um, I can't remember the title of it right off the top of my head but it's very interesting because you can kind of see that his scene was just very cool, um, very, uh, you know, using light in the evening, um, wide scene there. So, yeah, so you'll, you'll see some of this stuff. And then, you know, again, these portraitures, but then, you know, using the colors as well as the, uh, you know, expression on the people's faces. Uh, the reflection here in the water uh, for the 66 station with these people with their with their particular clothing on I mean it just it just works uh, emotion but this red uh, folder that this woman is carrying I'm assuming as some sort of protest or something is really interesting even you know things that like like that drawing your eye to the attention with these things uh, as well as these lines going to her face I mean, you know, a master of composition, a master of composition in color, where you take the, what's called, I guess, the referential uh, monkey <laughs> kind of uh, semiotic aspect of each thing, you know, uh, and uh, it all kind of works together really well. That almost looks like a te teller portrait, I mean, a teller uh, still life image. Um, so you see, uh, how these things work. I would say that Eagleston is really the master at this because he also uses perspective. He uses a lot of different things. And in comparison, in comparison if you go back to uh, Jürgen Teller's work, he's really keeping things flat. And he's, uh, and he's, of course, like having the subjects hold things and setting up scenes and, you know, using nudity and uh, using these other things for, for the effect, you know. Uh, but at the same time, and there's a, you know, another photo of an um, art guy uh, you know, using the television in this case with a model uh, down at the bottom of a very interesting television stand, um, you know, foot and things like that. So in some respects, Jürgen Teller is very, and his newer work, he's now just turned 50 years old recently, his newer work has, uh, has even more of a, well, there's feet, you know, see? So, a very close reference between Teller and, and uh, Eagleston. But at the same time, I think that um, Eagleston um, has a stronger sense of uh, art perspective and point of view. And this is more, more like a flat scene, but at the same time, he 
leave some extra space up the top so you can have the entrance and the and the other things so you know where you are um, they're both equally as good but uh, you can see how they influence each other a great deal actually um, now what I want to talk about too was uh, so William Eagleston is really known for having many 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 different cameras However, he is real. He has a uh, collection of over 200 Leicas. So here's my M7. Also, I have an M42. Um, again, it's also a rangefinder. I don't know if that's necessarily the uh, anything to show difference. Um, Jurgen Teller is a German photographer living in London mostly, uh, or living actually outside of London in England. Um, the strap is uh, Eric Kim's. Uh, Henri strap. Um, it's a really cool strap. It's nice to wrap around your hands. But um, yeah, so uh, using, I mean, this one has a 40 millimeter uh, Leeds Leica from, uh, from actually from the CL, this little rubber hood. And uh, it is a true rangefinder in the fact that once you look through the rangefinder itself, you're actually seeing just the image and you have frame lines. Um, like any other Leica uh, that, uh, you know, kind of light up through this window. Uh, only the M240 and M246 don't have that window. They have digital frame lines, and I think the M9 Platinum or N9 Titanium, sorry, uh, also has that. But, um, yeah, so this is another one of the primary tools for uh, Mr. Eagleson. And uh, also a telling thing that sort of the sort of the modern, this was uh, the contacts, was supposed to replace the, uh, uh, or at least compete with uh, the M6 and the M7. Uh, I think the M7 was a response to that because it does have automatic um, uh, shutter, uh, auto shutter, uh, shutter priority, um, and uh, or aperture priority, and uh, automatic shutter. Uh, whereas this one's pretty much a fully automatic camera, the Contax G2 and G1. G2 is a better camera in my opinion, uh, but the G G1 is a lot cheaper. You can get them for like $200 and you know maybe a little bit more with lens. Uh, the Leica M7, uh, M6 is about $1,800. M7, you know, you're looking at anywhere from two to four. Um, it's again, it is a Leica. It's you know still brass and uh solid parts uh this one does have auto it does also keep a battery um and uh there's only it does have a mode that you can use without the battery but only at 60 and 125th of a second whereas the contax g2 has uh, a number of different things up here uh, it's auto all the way up to four thousandth of a second. This one only goes to one thousandth of a second without the automatic feature. The automatic feature can go all the way up to four thousand. And um, the Contax G2 uh, has an auto setting as well, as well as like uh, exposure compensation. Um, you know, the M7 also has, uh, is one of the only Leicas, uh, first newer Leica that had actually DX coating, uh, but you can adjust that to where um, I usually keep my cameras at about, uh, with 400 speed film, about, uh, you know, anywhere between 800 and 1600, uh, just so I can have some extra shutter speed. Uh, I will use a flash with this. Um, I. Just, I don't actually have a flash for the contacts, but uh, that'll be something I'll get soon, or soon enough when I find one. Uh, don't like using eBay that often. But anyway, so that's my kind of discussion about the uh, two, uh, William Eagleston and Jurgen Teller, uh, two masters and their tools, the uh, Leica M, of course, mine is M7, but you can you really say any like I am, and the Contax G2. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are. Um, I'd like to go into a few other things in uh, the next few videos, and uh, maybe give you 
uh, something else to think about. So anyway, have a good evening. Uh, talk to you soon. Uh, this is Bill Brown, and uh, follow me, share me, and make some comments below.